Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we're going to have a conversation today that's just transparent. I'm going to read a little bit to you just because this is an article that we're kind of going from. And the article's name is How Long Will Your Money Last? Well, retirement planning is a big component. I talk to people about this each and every day. Most people think that they can just draw from their retirement accounts, you know, 401k, 403b, turn it into an IRA, and they can when they're actually of age of retirement. There's some laws that have come up that maybe open up things a little bit earlier right now, but it's temporary. So for the purposes of talking about retirement planning, we want to make sure that we're not making mistakes that could really be devastating. There's a term that they use in here, the money death. We don't want to have a money death situation. So what could that be? Uh, when we categorize what money looks like in retirement, what we want to do is we want to see all of our guaranteed resources. People will ask me all the time, you know, do you think that Social Security is going to be there? Well, I sure hope so, but we can't just plan off of hope. Now, the government's giving a lot of stimulus right now, and we're in a situation where if they start to decline Social Security, I don't think our country is going to be in a great place at all. They were talking last year in 2019 a little bit about, you know, pushing um, the conversation forward with Medicare and Social Security to do some reform. That means I believe in the future they're going to be talking about pushing full age of retirement for Social Security purposes out further and further for younger generations. We don't know that right now. But what is Social Security? Social Security is no different than an annuity. It's no different than a pension. And annuities kind of get a bad rap out there. Well, there's certain pension-like annuities that we call private pensions, pension-like income streams, that when we're looking at these, a pension, all it is is an annuity. It's kind of like this big bag of money that, let's say you work for a school district, or you work for a hospital, and there's an organization that's going to give you a pension. Well, today what they're starting to do is they're saying, okay, well, your pension amount is equivalent to X. And maybe X is, I don't know, four or $500,000. And then the other option is, okay, gosh, they're going to give me potentially $2,500 a month to live. Well, I don't know if that's as much as you're bringing home right now or if it's a lot less. But that income, when the company that's managing that pension has it, when you die, it dies. There might be some survivor benefits that'll go to your spouse, but when your spouse dies, that big bag of money, where does it go? It stays with the pension company. It's the same thing that happens with Social Security. When you die, it dies. Now with you and your spouse, whichever of the two is smaller would drop. This is where we start to, st uh, start to see when we have a spouse die in a relationship that maybe their income drops by 40, 50, 60%. We need to know those things. So what is a pension-like annuity from an, from an insurance company? Well, the interesting fact there is that we can guarantee with an insurance company's help and their good claims and rating ability to pay claims, we can guarantee a lifetime income, not just for one spouse or one partner, but for the second spouse. And it doesn't have to be decreased. So traditional pensions today, let's say from the government or anywhere else, they drop by maybe 50% for the surviving spouse. I've never met anyone, including my father, when my mother passed, that he needed to live on less. He needed to live on just as much. And today, you know, 15 plus years later, he needs every bit of that additional money as he did back then when mom was alive and they were living off of the same amount, inflation unadjusted. So life is getting more expensive. How do we maintain it? So there's another factor in here too, and it's called the 4% rule. I really want you to get a copy of this article. Again, how long will your money last? We don't have a crystal ball to know how long we're going to live, but people are living longer today. It's undeniable. We had a census done in 2000, and that was to find out how many people were alive and how many people were growing in age and what was their health maturity, right? So then they did another one in 2012. Well, guess what? They did another one in 2017, and just since 2017, they're doing another one this year for 2020. These are usually done by the government and also the insurance industries because they want to see how long people are living. They're, they're kind of shortening that gap right now because they know that people are living longer. We've had an opioid crisis that's been happening in our, in our country for the last several years. Younger ages are actually having more deaths, which 
is very unfortunate. Now we'll probably have this coronavirus um, situation, this pandemic being a factor as well. Um, so will that actually reduce longevity? Well, if you're from a family that you already have family members living into their 90s, more than likely you'll probably live to age 100. So we're not just planning for retirement for 20 years anymore. If we're only planning for maybe 15, 20 years, we're planning for failure. So if you virtually, let's say, retire at 55, you might have a 45-year retirement. If you virtually retire at 65 or 67, you might have a 35-year retirement. How long will your money last? Well, there's something that's been the 4% rule for quite some time, and I'm just going to talk about kind of managed accounts here. Um, there's this chart. You can kind of see it. Our printer hardly has enough ink in it. It printed out in pink. But what it does is it's going down, and it would be good for you to see. So there was a 10% rule, a 9% rule, a 5, 6, 3, 2, 1. And where are we at right now? So this bottom chart here, if you can see this, this bottom chart is the likelihood of this not running out of money, and that's the 3% rule. But one of the things I wanted to reach out to you about is that if you go virtually, you know, um, the rightmost black line represents, which in our situation is purple, withdrawal rate of 3%. And the odds of failure are quite low, even for periods of retirement remaining up to 30 years. Well, we need to plan for 35, if not 45 years. So the people that are happiest in retirement, look around you. They have income coming in each and every month, each and every year, that has no impact of what's happening in the marketplace. Why are the rules are reducing from four to three? Quite honestly, we plan on what we call the prudent person distribution or the prudent withdrawal rate. The prudent withdrawal rate has been dictated that if you could put your money into a fixed vehicle, meaning a fixed you know, government security, being the 10-year treasury note, that would be your safe withdrawal rate because if you took interest alone, Right now, I just looked this up yesterday, and it changes every day. The safe withdrawal rate, or the 10-year treasury note, was down to 0.67%. In the past, leading up to this year, we've been planning at around 2.18%, 2%, because the 10-year treasury was trading at that. So think about this. If you have a fear of running out of money, now is the time to have this conversation, because if you're 10 years in and you're taking out a 5 6 7% distribution of your money, how quickly do you think it's going to run out of money? might be 10 years, 12 years. See, when we talk about our financial behavior when we come to spending with credit cards and we want to pay them off every month, well, it gets to a point where we have to stop that spending or slow it down or reduce it. Market volatility, like what we've been going through here recently, and that's pretty drastic. When the market was down over 37%, the average consumer was closer to 50. Why? Cost, fees, and expenses. More risk, you're paying for losses. So if we have a 50% loss in your portfolio, can you still maintain the same distribution that you took the year before? We talk about this as a sequence of risk return. Well, sequence of risk return is just not acceptable in our portfolios now. Guaranteed pension-like income really is. The CARES Act, the SECURE Act that came out even earlier this year, give us a whole lot more opportunities. People aren't really talking about the SECURE Act right now, but it is relative. It is open right now. These pension-like annuities are going to be offered in your retirement accounts if you are still fortunate to be employed. If that's the case, why are they doing that? Because we want to protect the corpus of the money. So let me finish by talking to you about what this pension-like annuity is. And when we plan it for joint income for the two of your lives, not just one of you. If you're single, that's fine. The difference between a pension, remember that part of the conversation, is when you allow a company to take that money and create a guaranteed income stream for you, for the rest of your life, they keep the bag of money. Could those companies actually have risk that they can't pay? 100%. The difference with a pension-like annuity, or what we call a private pension, pension-like income, the structure there is when you start to take money, you don't lose the bag of money. Your surviving spouse gets the same amount of money that you got until the day they die. I have a couple that we've been working with recently. The husband's 63, the wife is 48. There's a huge gap of time there. She's going to outlive her husband, more than likely. Can't say that's true with a guarantee or a crystal ball, but the statistics are there to show that. She could be living in retirement after her husband dies for 50, 55 years. People are living longer. We want to have that money last us for the rest of our lives. So in a pension like annuity through an insurance company that is qualified to do the work that we're talking about here, and not all contracts are created equal, annuities technically have a bad name. Why? 
because they were designed in their original sense, back like social security days, when you die, it dies. The money stays with social security. Pensions, when you die, it dies. But these pension-like annuities that I'm talking about are when you die, whatever is left over in the big bag of money, guess where it goes? It goes to your beneficiaries and heirs. You have control, you have liquidity along the way, and you have guarantees to get that paycheck each and every month, each and every year, so that you can live the life of a long life for the rest of your life, for years to come. If you think you have any potential to have the ability to live to age 100 or beyond, or you wanna just plan that you're going to, a 35 year retirement is not out of your sight. So you can revert back to the stock market statistics and say, I'll take my chances and take out 3% per year. But if you've got a million dollars and it just went to 500,000, you just had a 50% decrease in pay. Our biggest risks are not being able to have the amount of income that we need each and every year to live the life that we need to afford to live, to pay our mortgage, to pay our property taxes, to pay our health insurance costs, to pay for food on the table, to pay for our car insurance. All those things that are constantly there. We talked earlier about some subscriptions. Everybody has them. What's it gonna cost us in the future? Now with the stimulus that we have just all received as a country, whether you're a small business owner or whether you're getting a stimulus package from the government of $1,200 or $2,400 or a $500 credit for your children, those things are coming, but there's a cost with it. When you talk about $2.2 trillion and then millions of more dollars put on top of that, guess what's going to happen? The cost of money, or what we call inflation, is going to go up. Things are going to become so much more expensive. Taxes are going to have to go up to pay for this. Even if a business owner can have something forgiven, someone's got to pay for it, and that's going to be us as taxpayers. What you want to consider is working with a pure economics-based financial advisor that's a fiduciary, that is looking at your best interest to actually look at what these models look like. You don't want to go to someone that's just planning one way. You want to look at every financial decision so that there's a good cause and effect, not a negative cause and effect. Because when you make the decision to say, again, a very common one, I've had many clients over the years that get referred to me after the fact that they've done something. And then they tell me that they've made a foolish decision. And that foolish decision was saying, I want to take three to $500,000 out of my retirement account and I'm going to pay off my house. Well, the taxes associated with that are devastating. When I go back to that statement that they talk about in this article once again, and they basically say that this is a money death or a money disaster, I don't think you want to have a money death or a money disaster. You want your money to last you as long as possible, and in most situations, people want a legacy to go to the next generation. Whatever your goals, dreams, and desires are, this is the important time to talk about it. I hope this message finds you well. If you are approaching retirement, in retirement, or even thinking about retirement, these are the conversations we should have. Don't do it yourself, please. Doing it yourself can create some catastrophic events. Even though you think you know all the facts, talk with your financial professional, talk with your tax professional, talk with a comprehensive financial advisor. We're here to help you. And as a fiduciary, we have to do everything in your best interest. Our interests aside, it's all about taking care of you, your goals, your dreams, desires, and also planning for you to live a very long life. Many people will tell me there's no way in the world I'm going to live to 100, but then they do. And if we run out of money, we're not going to have the quality of life to get us there. We want to be in a situation where we can be cared for by our, you know, our, in our homes or by family or by people that we enjoy spending time with, not by strangers. But these are all part of the conversations that affect you. I would encourage you, if you haven't gotten a copy of our book, Wealth by Design, that you either go to Amazon and get it, or you can go to our website at Elizabeth with an S, Dawson.com. Go to that website and see if you can click on the, the book icon and get a copy of our book. If you are busy like most people, audiobook version is free. You can hear me speak it to you for about 45 minutes, but I made it small and I made it easy to understand and I made it so that you could actually glean some information from it. So get your copy of Wealth by Design. I encourage you. And if you want us to send you a copy, we're happy to do that. Or just buy it on Amazon. It'll probably get to you faster than we can get it to you. So with that said, I hope this was a powerful message. Income planning is a priority. And guaranteed income sources are key. Don't let a word deter you from a great tool to be able to plan for your financial objectives. 
The market's a good place, but the market should have no impact on your ability to get your income each and every month in your financial plan, or it shouldn't have to make you reduce your lifestyle. All right, give us a call, 619-640-2622. I hope you share this uh, podcast with friends because everyone's going to be impacted by this. If we are truly in an environment where our Friday tip of the week last week had said that the Wall Street Journal thinks that we're going to lose over 14.4 million jobs between now and the end of June, that means over 205,000 people are going to be losing their jobs each and every day. We need to be having this retirement conversation. How do we plan for it? Because if we don't plan, guess what? Somebody has a plan for us. It might be the government. (laughs) in taxes. It might be you're thinking that, oh my gosh, this sounds like a great idea. At least I won't have my mortgage payment. Well, it's the cost of that money. Retirement plans are your number one reason for taking care of the financial responsibility to provide yourself with retirement income. Most people I know want a sure thing. They don't want a maybe. So use the tools at your disposal to make those wishes and goals and dreams happen. All right, take care. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay healthy. (laughs) Sorry, tongue tied. Um, Again, have a great day and uh, hope you post this with a lot of other people that they can actually hear a message that's just about you. Send us your questions too. We want to know what you want to talk about. Take care. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.